In Colorado, my father scoured and stacked dishes in a Tex-Mex restaurant. His co-workers, unable to utter his name, renamed him Jalapeño. If I ask for a goldfish, he spits a glob of phlegm into a jar of water. The silver letters on his black belt spell sangron. Once, borracho, at dinner, he said, Jesus wasn't a snowman. Arriba Durango, arriba Orizaba, packed into a car trunk, he was smuggled into the States, frijolero, greaser. In Tucson, he branded cattle. He slept in a stable. The horse blankets are the fragrant. Wood smoke, lilac. He's an illegal. I'm an illegal American. Once in a grove of saguaro at dusk, I slept next to him. I woke with his thumb in my mouth. No que no tronabas pistolita? He learned English by listening to the radio. The first four words he memorized, in God we trust. The fifth, percolate. Again and again, I borrow his clothes. He calls me scarecrow. In Oregon, he picked apples, Braeburn, John Gold, Cameo. Nightly, to entertain his cuates around a campfire, he strummed a guitarra, sang corridos, Arriba Durango, Arriba Orizaba. Packed into a car trunk, he was smuggled into the States. Greaser, beaner. Once, borracho at breakfast, he said, the heart can only be broken once, like a window. No mames, his favorite belt buckle, an aguila perched on an opal. If he laughs out loud, his hands tremble. Bugs Bunny wants to deport him. Cesar Chavez wants to deport him. When I walk through the desert, I wear his shirt. The gaze of the moon stitches the buttons of his shirt to my skin. The snake hisses. The snake is torn. Eduardo Guaral's poem acknowledges the journey of a, a undocumented alien into this country and also what it means to be the child of that undocumented alien. It shows that the arriving to the United States, to the land of opportunity, uh, to attempt to build towards the American dream that's very much alive and present uh, for many working class people, for any people that come to this country. Um, but in this case, the sun has come to uh, education to maybe a level of communication that's a little more sophisticated. So the poem had to reach toward his father's language, his father's behavior, uh, which might come across as vulgar, might come across um, as unacceptable, but at the same time, it's, it's who the father was. The father is expressing himself. The father has many sides. Right? He's not just somebody who's going to survive in a working class environment among other men. There's this masculine, that toxic masculinity that's part of that, of that uh, community or the part of that space. But when it comes to the intimate space, to the relationship between uh, the father and son, that the father can be paternal, can be nurturing, can express love for his son. When the poem states that the heart can only be broken once like a window, which is a very beautiful line, um, it, it speaks to the father's sentimentality. Remember, this is the man who uh, strums his guitar, who sings corridos, but I can assure you that he also sang love songs. You know, Mexican love songs are infamous for detailing uh, stories of heartbreak and heartache. When the Mexicans are drinking, they also become very emotional. So all of a sudden, all the pains from the past come back. And in this case, this is probably likely uh, gesturing toward a relationship. Uh, that was unfulfilled for the father. That is still the, the pain, the pain in his life that comes back when he is when he is drunk, when he is upset. It comes back to to, to haunt him almost. One of the movements in, in in this poem is that the son is trying to understand the father's journey. Now, the reason that there the moon is mentioned in this poem is because. Undocumented crossings usually happen at night, under the cover of night, right? To do that in the daylight, uh, you might be seen. So that's one, acknowledging that the father had to pass through through um, border cross at night. But then also that the moon also means something very differently to the poet. I mean, the moon as a, as a poetic image or trope is very important. It's romanticized, it is idealized, it is uh, something that, that connected to love, but then for the poet, it's also connected to this journey, this dangerous journey that the father took. 
And Josie, the other articles that Chloe mentioned in the poem, like the buckle and also the shirt. And what is the line again with the shirt? The line is, my, I wear my father's shirt. And so when, when the poet says, I, I wear my father's shirt, I mean, again, he's, he's not necessarily projecting, but he's, he's um, trying to uh, identify with the father. You know, the only way you can really understand somebody is to place yourself in their shoes, right? And so this is metaphorically happening in the poem through these different articles of clothing. Towards the end of the poem, uh, the poet writes, the gaze of the moon stitches the buttons of his shirt to my skin. Now, previous to that, uh, where the lines, you know, Bugs Bunny wants to deport him, Cesar Chavez wants to deport him. So there's still an acknowledgement that the father continues to be an undocumented alien, right, in this country, that, that, that danger of deportation is still very present. And so the, the son's um, acknowledging of the journey, acknowledging of the father's status, uh, and is his way to uh, hold on to it even, even more, more fiercely. So when the moon stitches the buttons to the shirt, it's like, you know, this moon is always going to remind me of my father's journey, and that's going to always keep him close to me, to my body. This poem resonates with me because my parents were also undocumented. Uh, they were uh, farm workers in California. So I know that feeling of having been born in the United States with privileges that my parents did not have. And what that means, what sense of responsibilities I have, not only to do better, to do well in this country, but also to remember their stories.